Hey everybody, and welcome once again to <clears throat> Nose in the Book, a Bible reading commentary with me, your host, Pastor Justin Van Reed. So great to have you with me as we take a look at five more chapters from God's Word today. We have Judges chapter 20, Acts chapter 24, Jeremiah chapter 34, Psalm 5, and Psalm 6. Uh, so let's just jump right in here. Judges chapter 20. So this is coming off of what we read in chapter 19 here about what has taken place in Gibeah, this horrible event of what has happened to this uh, this concubine girl. Um, and so um, her master here has cut her up, sent her to all different uh, the tribes of uh, Israel. And so they put together an army, 400,000 men to come and attack Benjamin and, uh, and specifically to attack the city of Gibeah. Um, so... They uh, come to the town, and uh, you know, first the uh, the man tells, you know, his uh, story, why he cut her up, and you know what had happened. And so they they all are saying, okay, let's go to Gibeah. So they come to Gibeah, and meanwhile, Benjamin hears about, and these are all the other tribes seem to be like united against Gibeah here. But Benjamin, where the tribe that Gibeah is in, uh, hears about this, and they come to defend. And so they've got about 26,000 warriors armed with swords uh, in Gibeah to join 700 elite troops. And that's up against a very large Israel army. Um, these elite troops um, are, you know, seem to be very good, so good that as the battle begins, day one and day two, the Gibeah, the Benjaminites in Gibeah here defend successfully, um, killing 22,000 Israelites the first day and um, killing 18,000 Israelites the second day. So you got 40,000 Israelites, 10% of the army there. It's already been wiped out here in two days. And meanwhile, what's really fascinating is that uh, Israel is inquiring of the Lord if this is you know what they should do. And the Lord is telling them, yes, go and fight, but then they're losing. Almost as though the Lord is judging Israel here. But then on the third day, he says, now I'm going to give you victory. And so they come up with this plan here um, to ambush the, uh, the the city. So they do as they've done before and run. And it's kind of like what happens with uh, AI when, when Israel con conquers AI. They run the people of Gibeah, Benjaminites, they come out after them, chasing them, and then they they turn and start fighting again. Meanwhile, they have other men hiding in ambush. They come out, strike the Gibeonites, uh, the Gibeahites, and um, they attack the city, burn the city. People give you these these soldiers. They try to run, they can't, and uh, and so it's, it's not a it's not a very good ending here. Um, it's not the end of the book, but. Just so sad here is a civil war here within Israel, and uh, you know all these tribes going up against one, and so many lives lost here within Israel as a result of it. Um, all right, that's a Judges chapter twenty. We come next to Acts chapter twenty four, and uh, Paul has been uh, transferred here, and uh, now he's going to appear before the Roman governor here, and. Um, and so the charges are brought up first off, you know, what this man, Paul, has done. And they accuse him of being a troublemaker, stirring up riots all over the world. Uh, but we know from reading earlier in Acts that those riots started up not because of Paul, but the response to what Paul was, uh, was teaching. Um, they call him the ringleader of a cult known as the Nazarenes, obviously after Jesus of Nazareth. Um, they accuse him of trying to desecrate the temple when they arrest him, something he didn't do. And so they want him, they want, um, him to examine him. So the governor here comes in and uh, wants Paul to speak. So Paul gives his defense and you know basically tells him, no, it's not true what they said. Here's what happened. He tells his side of the story and um, you know admits he follows the way, he says, which they call a cult. But he says, I, I worship God the God of our ancestors, right? I believe the Jewish law. Um, I have the same hope in God that these men have. Um, and so, you know, he describes what happened. You know, he came and, um, you know, the, the Jewish people had stirred up the crowds against him and uh, they accused him of crimes that he didn't commit. 
And so Felix here, the governor, was quite familiar with the way it says. Um, it says to wait, and, you know, and then he'll decide the case later. And he orders Paul to be kept in custody, but he's nice to him. And he wants to hear more from him. And a few days later, his wife Drusilla comes, and the two of them um, hear from Paul about faith in Jesus. And he's reasoning to them. And Felix is un easy with this and so he sends Paul away ultimately Paul's going to be left here and basically abandoned and forgotten in jail like Joseph uh, for two years we read at the end of the chapter so that's Paul's defense there before Felix in Acts chapter 24 all right then we come back to the Old Testament Jeremiah chapter 34 and this is in the midst of the Babylonian attack on Jerusalem, which Jeremiah has been calling and warning about for chapters now, been telling Zedekiah the king this is coming, been telling the Israelites this is coming. Now it's it's happening. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar has attacked before. He's attacking again. And um, what the chapter really focuses on, though, is these slaves. So the uh, Hebrews were supposed to release their slaves right on the year of uh, Jubilee. Um, and, you know, and also on every seventh year, the Sabbath year. And he says here that they haven't done this. They have, there has been no release. There hasn't been, you know, all of the following of the law here. But they've done it most recently. But then the people turn back and grab their slaves uh, again. And, um, and so uh, Jeremiah has this message for Zedekiah and the people. Zedekiah, you're going to be exiled. Um you know, and, and, and judgment is going to come on these people because they refuse to listen. Because they, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they, they broke this covenant. They broke God's law. Even though recently it was good for them to release their slaves, ultimately because they put them back into slavery here, they didn't really mean it. And, uh, and so God is against them. And um, he says he's going to basically uh, cut them apart um, and hand over Zedekiah. And, uh, and Jerusalem, that it's going to be captured and burned to the ground. So that's Jeremiah 34, the attack of the Babylonians and, um, and Zedekiah's judgment coming on Zedekiah, judgment coming on the people remaining in Jerusalem, because for all of their history here, they failed to, uh, to obey God's laws and specific laws, uh, like uh, releasing their, their Hebrew slaves. All right, we come last year to Psalm uh, 5 and Psalm 6. And again, we have prayers of David here. Uh, Psalm 5, David cries out to the Lord, I hear my prayer, right? Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my voice. He says, God, you don't take pleasure in wickedness, right? They're, they're, the, the, um, the, you detest murderers and deceivers. Uh, so God, you cannot stand wickedness. And, and this really goes to the heart you know, of, of what we talk about in the gospel about the fact that you know, beginning with the fact that God is holy and, and perfect and, and, and we are sinners and we're separated from him because God cannot stand wickedness. He cannot allow it to go on unchecked. He can't just ignore it. He can't just pretend, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It, it must be dealt with. It is a big deal. And, um, and, and so this is what we read here in Psalm 5, right? God, you can't stand wickedness. So God, be against the wicked. And be for your people, God. Put an end to this. Those who, uh, my enemies here are your enemies. Put an end to them, Lord, but vindicate your people. And then in uh, Psalm 6 here, um, you know, another short psalm. Um, another prayer here. Lord, forgive me. Uh, save me. Restore me. Right? How long until you restore me? Have compassion on me. Don't rebuke me in your anger. Rescue me. Save me. Um, he says, I'm worn out from sobbing. And my vision is blurred by grief. And so his prayer is, God, get rid of the evil people. Uh, for the Lord has heard my weeping. He says, the Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will answer my prayer. May all my enemies be disgraced and terrified. May they suddenly turn back in shame. All right, so that's what we have for, uh, for today's readings. Again, we had Judges chapter 20 and Israel's attack with a large army on Gibeah in Benjamin. We had Acts chapter 24, Paul's defense before Felix, and ultimately being uh, abandoned in jail. We had Jeremiah 34, and uh, the fact that uh, God's word during the midst of the battle is that Zedekiah and the Israelites there are going to um, lose and face judgment. Uh, Psalm 5 and 6, and uh, the cry out for God to vindicate the righteous and to punish 
the wicked. Hope you enjoyed this uh, last few minutes that we've had together. Until next time, keep your eyes on the Lord and your nose in the book. We'll see you again soon.